Hello everybody, this is Chaplain Bob. Um, I'm going to try to finish this Why God Allows the, uh, well, it's going to be the Kingdom of the Beast, the Antichrist, the Man of Sin, the Son of Perdition. Uh, the world knows it as the New World Order, but I'm taking a little sidetrack because this kind of it ties into it. Because, let's face it, Satan wants worship. And you could either have the seal of God or the mark of the beast. And believe it or not, there are at least 800 million people who are very friendly towards the mark of the beast already. But we'll get to that. Now, I believe there's 8 or 9 mil billion people in the world. That's... Uh, a billions, one thousand millions. So, we're talking about India. India has about 800 to 900 million people. It's almost a billion. But uh, before we get there, I'm uh, starting to load my... I'm going to start doing all my new videos and a few of my old ones to what is called GodTube. G-O-D, tube, T-U-B-E. And if you go to Google and type in God tube, as in God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, um, you know, God tube, you'll see. And, you know, just type in Chaplain Bob Walker, you'll find me. Um, I don't know how Christian the channel is, but they claim to be. Eh, you know how that works. So, but I was... Uh, I'm always going through stuff, looking for new information, current events, how things are tying into the Bible, and, um, you know, I was thinking about the uh, coming kingdom of the beast, the Antichrist, and the New World Order, as the world calls it. But it's going to be Satan's end time kingdom. It's going to be short. For us, it's going to seem longer than we want, but for him... In, in time and eternity, it's going to be short. So, let's, uh, just wanted to let you know, yeah, you could, if, if I vanish from YouTube, go to GodTube. Because everything from this point onward, I'm going to load on GodTube. I've already got a few of my videos on it, so I've got a channel there already. And, um, all right, let's uh, let's see what we got here. On, uh, well, let's take a look. Turn your Bibles to Genesis chapter three. In my opinion, for a good understanding of the Bible, Genesis is one of the most important books in the Bible. If you I mean, if you want to really understand what's going on. I mean, if you just, you know, you don't need to read Genesis for salvation. But if you really want to be a student of the Bible, Genesis is extremely important. If you really want to know what's going on. If you don't, well, just John 3.16. For God so loved the world. That's it, right? So let's go to Genesis 3. All right, Genesis verse, uh, chapter 3, verse 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had, had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, He shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. Funny, one of the first things out of the serpent's mouth, well, the first thing that's recorded out of the serpent's mouth is a lie. Ye shall not surely die, contradicting what God said. God said, touch it, you die. The serpent says, ye shall not surely die. 
For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Of course, God only wanted Eve and Adam both to know only good, but they decided they wanted to know the flip side of that coin, right? Heads, tails. So, first thing out of the serpent's mouth. He shall not surely die. God's a liar. Don't listen to him. I'm trying to, you know, I, I want to get your eyes opened. And you're going to be as gods, knowing good and evil. So, who is this talking serpent? Is this a snake that's got vocal cords? Okay, let's go to Revelation 12 and verse 9. The Bible interprets the Bible. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent. Why is he called old? Because he's been around for a long, long time. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. That's you, that's me. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. You know, this that would be an interesting Bible study. I'm hoping to get to it. He was cast out into the earth. I, I don't, you know, the Bible doesn't really address why the Lord casts Satan out into, and his angels into the earth and allows them to continue to do their wickedness. Probably some kind of a test for us. You know, you've heard it said, uh, we've got free will. Well, he placed Adam and Eve in the garden, and Eve was told, don't touch the tree of knowledge, good and evil. And she basically said, mm, I want to listen to this talking, the old serpent, right? The dragon, the devil, Satan. Now, is there a second witness? Revelation 20 and verse 2. And he, I believe that's Michael, and he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. That's the millennium, people. So, who is the old serpent? Satan. Somebody tells you it's a talking snake hanging from an apple tree. Uh, isn't it funny that every time you see a picture of... Uh, in the garden, it's always Adam and Eve, or Eve in the garden, naked with a snake hanging down from a tree. That's what Satan wants you to think. Satan was not a talking snake. The Bible declares that he was lifted up in pride because of his beauty. Sorry for the disturbance and interruption, but uh, turn to Revelation chapter uh, 13 and verse 1. And it stood upon the sand of the sea. And saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. So, when it says his mouth is as the mouth of a lion, think about it. Jesus is the word of God. What comes out of your mouth? The words, right? Isn't Christ called the lion of the tribe of Judah? So, this beast has the mouth of a lion. So he's going to speak words just like, you know, uh, pretending that he's the Christ. And he's going to pretend to be the lion of the tribe of Judah. Okay. And his mouth has the mouth of a lion, and the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed. And all the world wondered after the beast. 
and they worshipped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. And they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. That's roughly three and a half years. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name, Jesus. I bet you. I bet you that he's going to blaspheme the name Jesus because the New Testament was written in Greek. And that's what the name of Christ is in the New Testament. It says Jesus. It may not be spelled exactly that way, but phonetically it's about the same. I know uh, Greek people. And I once asked them, how do you say that in, in Greek? And it's almost exactly, pronounced almost exactly the same in um, Greek as it is in English. It's just, you know, the, the lettering is a little different, you know. And uh, just because the pronunciation is a little different doesn't mean anything. You've heard the car, the car, Caribbean, Caribbean. Um, I mean, you know, if you go out west... You go to the Midwest, you go up north in New York, and you go down in Atlanta, Georgia. They pronounce words a little bit different, don't they? So, and he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints. That's you people. And to overcome them, and power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. And all that dwell on the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. If any man have a hear, an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and faith of the saints. Now, some of you might argue with me and, and disagree, and, and that's fine, because I don't have the corner on truth, believe me. But if we're supposed to go into captivity for our faith, we're to go peacefully. Um, if they're going to take us into captivity for our faith in Jesus. We're not supposed to take up the sword. You know, if they want to kill you as a Christian, you're not supposed to pull out your 357 Magnum and blow their head off. Because if you kill that way, you'll be killed that way. We're supposed to have the patience and faith of the saints. Now, if somebody wants to kill you because of your skin color, by all means, protect your family. I mean, that's one thing, okay? I mean, there's just wicked people in this world. You know, I, I'm, I'm so sick of people that, that think they know the Bible so well. Uh, the Bible says murderers were to be put to death at the mouth of two or three witnesses. God didn't change his mind. He wants you to put evil away from this world. You know what? Maybe one day they would get saved. But if you catch somebody, a murderer, that's killing people that are made in God's image, God wants them put to death. Period. That's what it says in the law. Of course, the Hebrew roots people will never tell you this. They just want you to wear those stupid little tassels and they're their silly little rituals, um, you know, it's just, it's silly. I mean, you know, if somebody, if, if somebody's a murderer, you don't warehouse them so that they can get out of jail uh, after 60 or 90 days because some cop forgot to read him his rights and he gets to walk free and go and murder again. 
That's stupidity. The Bible tells you how to run a government. And when Jesus has the rod of iron that he's going to rule with, you better believe those are the laws he's going to enforce. You know, he doesn't want murderers running around killing innocent children. I don't know. It's just, I can't believe some of the uh, stuff I hear. All right, verse 11. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. Isn't Jesus called the Lamb of God? Oh, yeah. He's got two horns like a lamb, but he speaks as a dragon. And he exercised with all the power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. Probably going to call himself Elijah, because Elijah did this kind of a miracle in the Old Testament. And if you want to, you can go to my channel and uh, do a search, Elijah. Uh, I did an hour and 40 minute study on that, if I remember correctly. And uh, he brought fire down from the sky and devoured the Lord's enemies and the prophets of Baal. Well, no, I'm sorry, the, the soldiers. He didn't. They slew the prophets of Baal. Okay. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men, and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles, which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth, that they should make an image to the beast. An image is an idol, people. It's just, uh, the Greek word is icon. In the phonetic spelling in the English is either I-C-O-N or I-K-O-N. Those little pictures on your computer screen, those are called icons. They get that from the Greek. Okay? It means image. And uh, in the Old Testament, they didn't call it an image. They called it an idol. Basically the same thing. A picture can be an image. You know, I mean, come on. You get the idea, I hope. Okay? Saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast, which had the wound by a sword and did live. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast. Television? Computers? I don't know. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And there are going to be some Jews that know the Torah. And when they're told to worship an idol, they're going to say, you know what, maybe those Christians had something right after all. Verse 16. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. Remember that, to receive a mark, or in their foreheads. Take a look at those images that are flipping by right now. Mark, a mark in their forehead. And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let he that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is... 600, 6 score, and 6. 666. Six, six. Everybody should know that. All right. Um, I think we need to uh, take a look at something. Now, in Wikipedia, I've got the, in the description, I've got all this information. There's a thing called a bindi, or bindu. It's a decoration. Uh, it means... A drop, a point, a dot, or a small, par small particle. Also, depending upon who you say, it also means a mark. Uh, it uh, is a red dot. A red dot. Worn on the center of the forehead. Commonly by Hindu and Jain women. 
The word Bindu dates back to the Hema creation known as the, I don't know what the heck those words are. B um, Bindu is considered the point at which the creation begins and may become unity. Hmm. Didn't the Bible teach that uh, separation? But to these people, it means unity. Uh, let's see. It is also described as the sacred symbol of the cosmos in its unmanifested state. Bindi is a bright dot of red color applied in the center of the forehead close to the eyebrow worn in Indian subcontinent, particularly among Hindus in India, in India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Nepal, and Sri Lanka. And that's what you're kind of like looking at. Those women with the, the red dots, you know, they call them dot heads. You know, it's, it's usually the women that have those. Uh, let's see. Traditionally, the area between the eyebrows where the bindi is placed is said to be the sixth chakra, the seat of concealed wisdom. Where, where did we read about concealed wisdom? For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Concealed wisdom. The bindi is said to retain energy and strengthen concentration. The bindi also represents the third eye. That's what that dot on that forehead means, the mark. Your eye, your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Okay, Wikipedia, third eye. The third eye, also known as the inner eye, is a mystical, mystical, that means that's a synonym for magic. The third eye, also known as the inner eye, is a mystical and esoteric concept referring to a speculative, speculative invisible eye which provides perception beyond ordinary sight. In other words, the spiritual world. That's what they're talking about. In certain Dharmic spiritual traditions such as Hinduism, the third eye refers to the Ajna or brow chakra. In theosophy, it is related to the pineal gland. Theosophy. Um, when you start studying about theosophy, theo means God, but it's not the God of the Bible. It's the God of Satan, the God of this world. Theo has reference to God. Um, there was a girl, woman, well, a monster, female monster named uh, Helen Blavatsky, and uh, she was into theosophy, and she was pretty open in her beliefs that uh, Lucifer is Lord. Okay. All right, let's keep reading um, Wikipedia, Third Eye. The Third Eye refers to the gate, your mind, I guess, that leads to the inner realms and spaces of higher consciousness. Oh, yes. You shall know of good and evil. You shall be as gods, knowing good and evil, right? In New Age spirituality, I was kind of an expert on that. I came out of that. Um, I wasn't heavy into it, but I was starting to get into the New Age. So I have a, a background in it. In New Age spirituality, the third eye often symbolizes the state of enlightenment or the evocation of mental images having deeply personal spiritual or psychological significance. The third eye is often associated with religious visions, clairvoyance, the ability to observe chakras and auras, precognition, and out-of-body experiences. People who are claimed to have the capacity to utilize their third eyes are sometimes known as seers, S-E-E-R-S. See, uh, you know, like to vision, to look, to see, S-E-E, -E, and then you put an R on the end. But in, uh, what is a seer? Well, the Bible explains that. In 1 Samuel 9, 9, we read, Before time in Israel, it's, a, it's an old English word, Before time in Israel, when a man went to inquire of God, thus he spake, Come, and let us go to the seer. For he that is now called a prophet 
was before time called a seer. You know, all those dots, those women wearing those little red dots on their head, why, why, is, why is it red? You know, in Kabbalah, um, they wear a red string. Why? Why is it red? Um, well, in 12, Revelation 12 and verse 3, And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon. Why is it red? Why not green or blue? Because the great red dragon, right? Revelation 20, verse 4. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. And that's the introduction, people. That's the introduction for the thousand years. I mean, that's just, that's basically just getting started. Okay? But, um, Something you should know about India, the people that, those dot heads, the ones that wear the, you know, little, some of them have, uh, use red paint, but others take an actual ruby, a red ruby, and, and put a dot to their head. I don't know how they attach it, you know, but um, why on the forehead? You know, why not on the ears, like an ear ring or something? I don't know. But the uh, India is very interesting. The main religion in India is Hinduism. And if you've ever heard of Hare Krishna, he is one of the hundreds and hundreds of thousands of Hindu gods. Little g. And, you know, India is one of the poorest countries in the world. It is absolutely, from what I read, 3,000 people average every single day in India die of starvation. 3,000 every single day. And I've heard people say, well, if there was a God, why doesn't he take care of the people in India? That's a good question, and I'm going to answer that. Let's answer that question right now. All right, the answer is in John chapter 14, verse 1. Uh, I'm sorry, 11. Jesus speaking, Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very work's sake. Jesus did a lot of works. He raised the dead. He healed the sick. He cast out devils. He made the blind to see, the deaf to hear, the dumb to speak, the lame to walk. He did miracles that no other, I mean, just the, the sheer volume and the different things that he did. He just did miracle after miracle after miracle. Or else believe me for the very work's sake. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. Listen carefully, verse 13. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. You know, the thing is, when missionaries would go to India and they would tell the Hindus about Jesus, oh yes, he's God. And they're like, Oh, very good, very good. Jesus is God. Yes, yes, we believe that. Well, India's got a, over a million gods. Let's say India's got a million gods. Well, when you tell them about Jesus, now they got a million and one. But when you tell them Jesus is Lord of Lord and King of Kings, that's what you got to tell them. He's Lord of Lords 
and king of kings. You see, they don't ask in Jesus' name. They ask in Brahma's name. They ask in Vish Vishnu's name. They ask in Shiva's name. They ask in Hare Krishna's name. They don't ask in Jesus' name. You know, if you're asking one of the devils to feed you, why is God the Father? Why would Jesus Christ, his son, give you something when you're giving glory to, to his enemy? You know, Shiva is known as the destroyer. Shiva's a four-armed devil that has a, like a spear and a sword in one hand and I don't know what else. I, I don't know. I just know Shiva is the destroyer. And it's the uh, symbol. India gave that as their symbol to that CERN over in uh, Switzerland on the near the French border. And uh, yeah, for those of you that don't know it, Switzerland has three national languages. They border Austria, which is uh, German. They border Italy, which is Italian, and then they border France, which um, they speak French. They don't have their own national language. There's no Swiss language. It's either you know Italian, German, or French. And most Swiss know at least two of those languages. At least two. So, you know, that's the thing. India doesn't ask in Jesus' name. And they don't acknowledge him as Lord of Lord and King of Kings. And 3,000 people every single day die of starvation. Is it God's fault? Why is it his fault? They don't give glory to him. They don't ask him. I mean, let's face it. When you were a little kid, did you go to your next door neighbor and ask for a dollar so that you can buy an ice cream? No. Did you go up to a complete stranger in the mall and say, can I have a dollar for ice cream? No. They're not going to give you, well, they might give you a dollar, but chances are probably not, right? No, you go to your parents. Mom, Dad, can I have a dollar for ice cream? Sure, kid, here you go. Here's a buck. Here's two. Well, that's what you got to do. You got to ask God the Father. And you got to do it in Jesus' name. That's how it works, people. That's why India is so that's why India is so poor. They don't they don't do it in Jesus name. So matter of fact, they are uh, they're already putting a mark on their forehead that the Bible says not good things about, right? So All right, well, um, this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries in John 8:12. Jesus said, "I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life." And uh, this is part of the reason why God's going to allow the uh, kingdom of Satan, the coming kingdom of Satan, the beast, the man of sin, the son of perdition, and the mark, 666. All right, well, all blessing and praise and glory and honor of the Jesus, the Lamb of God, slain before the foundation of the world, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, in Jesus' name, amen.